Best of r slash entitled parents episode 1. I just made another post about my wedding and my entitled parents, but I remembered something else that I wasn't sure belonged here. But here goes. My fiancé now husband, and I decided for a long time to go to Disney World for our honeymoon. I used to live in Florida and I was familiar with the area, and last I went was 6 years ago when we first got together, and my fiancé hadn't been since he was about 7. We were so excited to be going to the happiest place on earth. Then a few months before, I had this conversation with my mom. Mom, so, we're going to pay for your flights there. Me, wow. Thanks mom. That will really help. Mom, also, we're going to. Me, what? Mom, oh don't worry. You'll stay where you're staying. We're just going to be with your aunts and uncles at their timeshare. They're going to after the wedding so we thought we'd join them. Florida is like a second home to my parents but I didn't think they'd follow me on my honeymoon. I didn't want to argue though and make my mom mad enough she wouldn't pay for the flight. Me, oh I'm okay. We're going to be flying separate though right? Mom, of course. It's your honeymoon. Me, and you're not going to Disney? Mom, well, I want to go but you know your dad doesn't like the park so most likely not. About a month later my mom told me my aunts and uncles weren't going to Florida anymore but they were still going. On top of that my brother and sister decided to tag along and want to go to Disney and it would be unfair if we went and they didn't. I couldn't say no because my sister had just had her engagement broken in a terrible way and she didn't go with us last time we were at Disney. I did offer in saying they could join us maybe for one day for dinner or something. On top of that, we would be staying with my siblings for the final two days to extend our vacation a little. I double checked we were flying separate, they said yes. We'd be a little less alone but at least it's still our honeymoon. My best friend and maid of honor was telling me it was kind of fucked up they were kind of crashing our honeymoon and saw nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's supposed to be our time to be together, alone, and enjoy ourselves as a married couple. I told her it was fine. I really have a hard time saying no to my family. But then she decided to talk to my mom about it after the wedding while I was taking my dress off to change. I didn't hear everything but what I did hear was, Mom, I just want to make sure they're safe. They're traveling on their own for the first time I want to make sure things run smoothly and nothing happens. BFF. I think it's time to cut the umbilical cord. Mom. Mom. Laughing. Oh. It's nothing like that just protecting her. I stopped listening after that or I got busy or something. Day of comes along and my new husband and I are rushing to get to the airport. We're so excited to be going on a plane and a whole trip alone for the first time and to be alone. A half hour later, I feel a tap on my shoulder. It's my brother. My mom booked us all on the same flight. Different seats, but we were behind them so we were still close together. She said she did this so we could stay together. We had different book transportation with Disney so when we had the chance to separate we did and we had a wonderful time together at Disney. I could not have asked for a better honeymoon with my husband. Our final day at the parks we were with my siblings which was still fun. Though of course in the back of my mind I wished my honeymoon wasn't just another family vacation. My siblings unfortunately did have moments of entitledness in our final two days of our honeymoon but nothing really worth getting into. We still had a wonderful time, but that being said, we are planning to have our next trip to Disney, or anywhere, without parental guidance whenever we can afford it which may be a while since we're low income. Thank you. Next. So, this incident happened in 2016 when I was a simple 10 year old boy, and, the public playground was in the apartment where I was living. Cast. ED. Entitled Dad. Me. Obviously me. Now. The following the conversation took place in Hindi, but, your friendly redditor will translate it for you. Me, joyfully playing with my friends. Ed, excuse me, please get off the playground. You're too old to play here. Me, why? Ed, because you're too old to play here and you may hurt my child. Me, don't worry, we do not play harshly and will not hurt the child. Ed, I don't know about that but you must get off this playground. Me. Visible confusion. Anyway, we ignore him and continue our game for about 10 minutes when he interrupts the game. Ed. Don't you guys have manners. I told you must leave the playground so you should. Me. 
but this is a public playground. Everyone can play here. ED, but you're too old to play here. Me, being a simple innocent boy that time, leaves the playground. To this day, I regret taking any action against ED. Because of him, I experienced my life's first WTF moment. TL. Doctor, ED successfully tries to get me out of a public playground worrying that a 10 year old boy, me, may hurt his 6 7 year old child. Thank you, next. First off I'm sorry for any grammar mistakes, English I sent my native. This is something that happened about a year ago when I still worked in retail, mostly at the cash registry. The store I worked at was a big type of store that sells almost everything, from food and drinks, to clothes and even basic furniture. There was a family that unloaded a lot of things on the conveyor belt, nothing unusual there. The family consisted of a short and silent woman, the mother most likely, who clearly was scared to even make eye contact with me, two kids of around 3 and 6 years old, could be off on that, I am not really good at guessing ages tbh, and a father, vd, the main antagonist and the subject of this story. So, as usual I am scanning the products, which are all neatly put in boxes, so I have to take them out and put them on the other side one by one. The ED already gets annoyed here. ED. Can't you just put those products back in the boxes after you scan them? Exactly how you found them? ME. I am sorry sir. This way I can be absolutely sure I don't skip or double scan anything and normally we prefer our customers not to put products inside boxes like this, as it makes everything go slower. The only reason I am not asking you to go back and take everything out of the boxes before putting them on the belt is because it's not too busy right now. ED. Whatever, just do what you're being paid for and shut up. I shrug this off and continue scanning the products when I notice one of the kids is holding one of the toys that was in promotion that day. Me. Hey little guy, would you mind me scanning that toy a moment, so that your mommy and daddy can pay for it? The kid shakes his head and hugs the toy close. Emmy. I'm looking at the mother at this moment, as she's closer to the kid. Mom, can you please convince your child to let me scan that toy, otherwise you can't take it with you. The mother looks away, seemingly nervous. ED. Let him keep the toy, it's in a discount promotion anyway, so why do you need to care? Emmy. Sir, the toy might be in a discount. But even free items need to be scanned, otherwise you are stealing it. ED gets really annoyed at this point, lets out a sigh, reaches around his wife and snatches the toy from the kid which starts to sob. I scan the toy and try to give it back to the child but it only sobs louder, so ED snatches it out of my hands and literally throws it at his wife without a word. By this time I am very uneasy and continue to scan the products as quick as possible, trying to keep my face in a smile. Part of me wanted to help the poor woman and her children, but I know that as an employee I'm supposed to just smile and nod without getting into any personal business of costumers. Then the beer arrives. The last item on the belt is two big crates of beer, from a brand that has recently been added to the store. This means that, when I scanned the crate, the register didn't pick it up as the barcode wasn't added in the system yet. Adding barcodes in the system took usually around two weeks. As it was an older system and it had to be done by people in the main office that's located in another country, the beer was new in the store since the day before this event. So I do what I normally have to do, and call up manager for alcohol, so he can tell me how much the beer costs, so I can manually input it. Every cash register has a phone for internal use and every department manager carries a mobile internal phone on them. ED. Why did you have to ask the price? Can't you read what that screen in front of you says? Or are you dim? Me. I'm sorry sir. The system doesn't know this brand of B yet, as it's new since yesterday. So I have to manually input the price. Well have to wait for the manager of alcohol to call back with the price. ED. Wait. Why don't you just put in the price of any other beer? Or even better, give it to me for free as you have already been very rude to me. Me. Perplexed. Excuse me. How have I been rude to you, sir? ED. You refused to put my groceries back in the boxes. You pestered my child, tried to talk to my wife and now you dare have me wait on this alcohol manager of yours so I can buy some effing beer. By this time ED is raising his voice, but he calms down when the phone rings and the manager tells me the price of the beer. 
Now at this point I have to also call the cache registry manager, so they can confirm permission for this manual input with their badge, and upon knowing this ED really loses himself. ED, do you mean to tell me now, that you're not even qualified to do this on your own? Are they hiring monkeys in this store nowadays? The mother shrinks as ED starts yelling and swinging his arms around while ranting on ED. Do you even know who I am? I can get you fired for this. I know people in high places and you don't want to mess with me. Just give me that beer for free. No even better give me all my groceries for free as a compensation to the way you've been treating me and my family. At this point the children are crying and my colleagues and other shoppers are looking our way for a while already. I've been called names at that job before, but this was a very public display and the man was also visibly getting violent with his gestures and the way he started to loom over the cash registry. Now keep in mind, I myself am a very short, slightly plump and definitely not strong woman, but I have learned not to show any signs of being intimidated. The fact that I didn't shrink away or anything, seems to have pissed him off more as he starts to yell that I am disrespectful etc etc. The cash registry manager arrives and asks what the problem is ed. Your employee doesn't do her job well and could easily be replaced by a dressed up baboon. That would look better too. Now I don't usually let insults about my appearance get to me, but due to how he yelled that and a lot of people were looking, my face got beyond red at that point in pent up anger and held back tears. Manager. Sir, if it is about the need of my badge, that is something every employee at the cash registers need. A manual input of prices, have to be confirmed by me or the other manager, in order to avoid mistakes. The manager does the scan for confirmation but can't stay longer as she was needed somewhere else. ED packs the boxes angrily in the trolley, while muttering about, incompetent, and other things I don't immediately know how to translate to English, while I take a deep breath, thinking it is all over now. It was not, M.E., so that will be, insert number I don't remember here, euros, will you be paying cash, credit card or bank card, ED, credit card. I set things up for him to pay with credit card when his card gets refused. M.E. I'm sorry sir, your card is getting refused. E.D. Now listen here you. Just because you don't like doing your job, does not mean that I have to suffer. My credit card is just fine. I paid for gas with IT earlier today. M.E. Sir, your credit card is getting refused by the system. It is nothing I can help. E.D. To his wife. You pay. His wife meekly pays for the groceries while E.D. fuming grabs one of the crates of beer, meaning to put it on the shopping trolley, but his hand slips or something because it falls and after a loud sound of crashing glass, the floor got covered with beer and everything immediately smelled like it too. I hate the smell of beer, or wine, it makes ma nauseous, and this is the final drop for E.D. as he starts screaming in an almost inhuman voice and incomprehensible, kicks the fallen crate which makes another bottle fall out and break, pushes aside the trolley which gets close to falling over and makes me gasp as the smallest kid was sitting in it, you know, on one of those seats where the handle is. Both kids have been crying up till this point, their father's outburst shocked them so much they went silent and people around are shaking their heads and murmuring to each other. Edie actually ends up reaching over the cash registry, clearly going for my throat, when finally security arrives to escort the man out. The woman looks at her husband who is getting almost dragged out of the store as he isn't cooperative at all. The registry manager is back too by this point to see what is going on. Mother. I am sorry for my husband. He gets like this when he doesn't have his beer in time and we were supposed to buy some about 2 hours ago. Manager. Mom. Maybe you need to seek some help. This isn't healthy for either you or your kids. Mother. With a weak smile. I know. But he is keeping us alive and I love him. After this the mother walks off with the children and the groceries and the manager gave me some break time and in the break room, I lost my cool and cried for quite a while. Afterwards I came to know that this man was already infamous in the store for being an aggressive alcoholic and many attempts have been made by people in the store to try and help the mother and children by calling child protective services etc. But the mother refuses help and the children don't dare admit that they're scared of their father, so none of the services can help them. TLDR, ED doesn't get things his way, 
he needs to wait too long due to the beer he wants not being in the system yet and rages so much he destroys half the beer he made his wife pay for after which he tries to assault me. Thank you. Next. It's a story years before. I've taken Retlin for a couple of weeks to test how they work for me. Due to heavy depression during the night after the rush I didn't take them anymore. The last time I took them the pills weren't actually filled with Retlin, but with something else. I've had diarrhea for weeks until my mother tid the pills apart. She tried and screamed at my father that it was only sugar. He bought the pack from a colleague instead of the apothecary who instead sold us some sugar-like substance. Is there another drug that possibly tastes like sugar? He could have put anything in there killing me. Thank you. Next. It was a super hot day in Arizona and EM and her three spoiled rotten rich children were walking next to my grandparents house. I think they must have been on vacation slash road trip without access to a pool in the heat. My cousin and I were splashing around having a grand old time when we heard EM's voice from across the gate. Hello? My kids would like to come in your pool. Her kids looked mortified and embarrassed. I was older than my cousin so was forced to respond. Um. Sorry. Our parents aren't at home. She responded by saying that her kids were really in need of it, even though they had water on them and didn't look like they wanted to come in. She then opens the gate and starts walking towards us. I guess since she knew our parents were at home she couldn't get shot. Kona. I managed to push her out back out the gate, pretty much using force, back to her kids. Then EM starts screaming at Emmy saying, You have to it's so hot in this heat. I was only 12 at the time I'm 13 now, so I didn't know how to react. I was so scared. Thankfully now I am mature and have had my bat mitzvah I can laugh about it now. Thank you. Next. TL. Doctor. Got engaged. Tell mom. She demands a big blowout wedding saying I owe it to her for not having a graduation party. Heyo all. I just got engaged Tuesday night. Currently Friday as of writing this for future F. I was happy and gushing telling my friends, and my mother. Right when I told her when I got home, she started making plans for the wedding. I don't even really want a wedding. I'd prefer getting papers signed at the courthouse and having a small ceremony of maybe 5 friends and our parents as witnesses. Tops. But my mom went into a tangent about how we'll need to rent out the auditorium like building, IDK what it's called, at our local armory. She's planning for inviting nearly her entire side of the family, people I don't know exist or haven't seen since I was in diapers. I tell her what I'd like instead and she says that's no good, it needs to be a big celebration. You owe it to us after not having a big graduation party. And I just can't form a response that won't start a fight so I'll have to go to my room and vent to my friend. She's done things that have made me debate posting before. But I was encouraged to post this by a good deal of people so, here you go. Edit. I have no plans to let her run the show, I just came here to vent my frustration with her thinking she can. Thank you. Next. Okay, just or your understanding. EK. Entitled Kid M. Mum slash Mommy A. Entitled Auntie GF. Cousins Joel Fried C. Cousin. So, about a month ago my family were hosting a baby shower for my cousin and his girlfriend. People were assigned to sew, stuff for the shower, games, design, etc. There was a game and everyone got one peg, and if you heard someone say the word baby you could take their peg. Now you get it. So my C's GF had her family over, and there were two young girls, 9, 7 or 8, who kept asking me how many pegs do you have? Because I had the most pegs while they had second most, and I was just standing there awkwardly while they kept poking at my chest counting my pegs. I felt so uncomfortable, and I wanted to yell at them so bad but I couldn't cause my family and GF's family were there. So my aunt is counting my pegs and the girl's pegs. The two girls were a team, and I end up winning with 18 pegs, and the girls have 17. My mom gives me the prize and I am over here acting like Carrie White with her flowers at prom when she won prom queen. And the two girls looked so mad. Then my EA tries to grab it out of my hands, succeeds and says be a gentleman, and snatches my box of chocolates and gives it to the EKs. My mom quickly snaps back and gives me the second box of chocolates. We has two cores she thought I wasn't going. To this day, I am still so pissed off at my auntie.